Now that we've talked about polygroup it using your geometry, let's talk about these polygroup it from paint and border options here. Again, if you hover over these and you hold down control, you'll see a fairly good explanation, but let's go ahead and just go through a few examples. The first thing we need to talk about is polypainting in general. And what polypainting is, if I have my standard brush here, and we'll go ahead and leave Sculptures Pro mode off for now. If I open up my subtool menu here, you're going to see we have a little brush icon here that turns on and off colorize. Now if I have RGB turned on for my standard brush, and let's go ahead and turn Z add off, so now we're just painting on our object. If I start painting, you're going to notice that colorize turns on. It doesn't look like it did anything because the default color on these vertices is white. But if I change this to like say a red color and start painting, you're going to see I'm painting now red on my vertices. Now because poly paint is vertex color, if I zoom in here, if you turn on poly frame, you're going to see we have a little more resolution here and then not a lot of resolution here when we created our original mesh our demonstration mesh here. So you're going to see when I start poly painting here, it's going to be a little higher resolution. And as I go towards the middle, it's going to lose resolution because it's going to be dependent on how dense your vertices are and how many vertices you have to get either a nice amount of information or just a little bit of information. So if we undo all that and go back out to where the colorize is turned off, or you can just tap that paintbrush off, you're going to see our object turned red, and that's because we have the red color selected. If we choose a green color, or a blue, or purple, or you drag this thing around, or you can hold down, you can tap, sorry, C in your interface, and you can just sample any colors from here. So again, if you have colorize off and you choose a color, it's going to turn the entire object that color. And then if you start painting, you're going to see what looks like kind of a graphical glitch. You're painting magenta here and then the rest of it is magenta. But if you just tilt your camera, you're going to see it's going to pop back into this is the white vertex color that comes with your object. And now you're painting with your color. You can paint with materials and RGB values or just materials, but we're going to stick with just RGB for now. And just like when you're sculpting in ZBrush, you can hold down control to mask an area, and then you can start painting around that mask. Let's go ahead and change our color here to a blue. And now you're gonna see we're not going to be able to paint inside that mask. You can control tap to invert that mask, and now you can paint inside this mask. You can also use this if you hold down control and just drag out an, an area here. You can control tap to invert that, and then go over here to color, fill object, and that'll go ahead and fill this area with green. If you don't wanna see your poly paint, you can touch this paintbrush over here, and if you have multiple subtools in here, hold down shift and touch the paintbrush in order to turn off the poly paint for all of your subtools. Where all of this is happening is if we scroll all the way down here to the bottom of your tool menu where it says poly groups, where it says poly paint, and you're gonna see colorize this button right here. This toggles on and off that paintbrush icon. And you can see we have a few options in here. If you have a texture loaded, so if we go down here to the texture map, you can import or just use one of these textures here. And if you have UVs, you'll be able to assign a texture and then say you want to make a poly paint from that texture. It'll convert your texture to vertex color. And you also have poly paint from poly groups. So for example, if we turn off colorize here, we hold down control shift, we go into poly group it, which we talked about in the last video. And let's go ahead and just start tapping in areas. Now this is a white poly group, which is a little bit hard to look at. I'm going to alt tap this one to change that one out. There we go. And let's go ahead and just set up some really quick polygroups here. And let's go ahead and turn on extend. Hit OK. And now if we turn on our polyframe here, you're going to see we now have new polygroups from that. And if we want, we can go down here and say poly paint from polygroups. And now it's transferred that polygroup information to the polypaint itself. If you have a subtool, and you want to start poly painting on it fresh and you turn on colorize and you realize it already has poly paint information on it. All you need to do is select a white color, go up here to color, fill object, make sure you don't have any masking. And now you can just start over with a fresh poly paint. Now you can, if, I, if you undo that, you can take this RGB value here and crank that down. And now when you go to color fill, it'll just color in 29%. So if you keep hitting that, you can knock back the original color. You can use Spotlight to texture through, and if you go to my YouTube channel, like I've mentioned before, watch the Intro to Zebras Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, that'll walk you through a lot of that basic functionality, and including more details on polypainting. I just wanted to give you a quick refresher on what polypainting is before we get into the polygroupit functionality.